bad girls. While dealing with her new watcher, Buffy begins emulating Faith's behavior. We open with Buffy and Faith fighting vampires, and Faith is incredulous that Buffy has never had sex with Xander. Which is the most ridiculous thing to be surprised by that I've ever heard. Including that this show went on for seven seasons. (laughs) (laughs) When they go after the final vampire, Faith does a pointless roll over a gravestone and naturally gets her ass handed to her. The vampire has two swords, and when Buffy goes to get them after the fight, they are missing. And it turns out Mr. Trick is delivering them to Mayor Elbrin. Who says they have a dedication coming up in a few days and don't want anything to interfere. And it's the final step before his ascension to a higher plane. Willow talks about all the colleges that she has been accepted into for early admission. And I'm surprised Buffy didn't talk about being accepted because apparently her SAT scores were through the roof. Cordelia comes by to make fun of Xander because it's just so easy to do. And then leaves. Buffy goes to the library where she meets Wesley Wyndham Price, her new watcher. And Giles has actually done a background check this time to make sure he's not evil, which was nice. He is very straight to business while having no real sense of being an authority figure, and questions her about her patrol the night before where she mentions the sword-wielding vampire. Wesley and Giles both immediately think that's important, even though anyone can use swords, especially if you're a vampire. (laughs) Wesley determines that the vampire was an acolyte of a demon called Balthazar, who had a magical amulet that gave him strength. He was supposedly killed, and now his remaining cultists are looking for the amulet. But for some reason, Wesley doesn't think that poses a threat. And he directs Buffy to go get the amulet. Faith questions why Buffy is following Wesley's orders, and says that they should enjoy being slayers. And again brings up how hot she gets after killing something. She's a very well-balanced individual. (laughs) Buffy goes looking for the amulet in the graveyards, and given how many times they've searched the graveyards for things before, you'd think they'd have found everything interesting by now. But she finds it in a sarcophagus. A bunch of cultists come in, so she hides, and they take the amulet. Not questioning why the sarcophagus is already open and the amulet is just sitting right there. Faith finds Buffy and criticizes her for hiding, and they go after the vampires. Buffy doesn't want to go into the sewer after them because it's too dangerous, but Faith jumps in, forcing her to follow. It's good to see that someone else had a problem with Buffy always just letting the bad guys go. Wesley is going through Giles' diaries, talking about Buffy, while Buffy and Faith are fighting the cult members. There are a whole bunch of them, and one of them apparently drowns Buffy. I thought Buffy actually died and came back to life. I thought maybe the amulet would have caused her to come back to life or something. I hate it when they drown me. But apparently that's not the case and it didn't go anywhere. And it was a moment of false drama. Reminded me of that fake Cordelia death earlier. And for some reason, when she gets back up, the vampires basically all just run away, even though they were winning. Faith talks for the millionth time about how slaying gets her hot, and then they go to take the amulet to Wesley. The next day at school, Buffy, Willow, and Xander are taking a test, and Buffy is talking about her experiences and how she felt uninhibited. And Xander finally points out that she shouldn't be talking openly about how she gets turned on by stabbing people in the chest. (laughs) The teacher tells the students they are on the honor system when it comes to taking the test, which is basically giving them free reign to cheat. What a good teacher. And during the test, Buffy keeps talking about slaying, which somehow the excellent teacher doesn't notice. And when Faith shows up at the window and shouts into the classroom and then Buffy jumps out of the window, the teacher also apparently doesn't see it or hear it or do anything. Yeah, is she just not in the room? Is that why she said they were on the honor system? What a great teacher. Apparently the school has bigger problems than just all the kids dying all over the place. (laughs) Faith tells Buffy she's found a vampire nest and they decide to go take it out. After they fight them, they then slip into Blade. (laughs) i really wanted the sprinklers to start spraying blood that would have been awesome and i was a little confused because they killed the vampires during school and this seems to be right after so i thought it was the middle of the day when they're just having this big rave but then angel shows up he tells buffy that balthazar is still alive and looking for the amulet and the whole time buffy is acting more and more like faith when it comes to getting turned on by the slaying And I wondered what Angel's sources of information are. He's been in another dimension for like a thousand years or whatever, and the only person he really talks to is Buffy, so where is he getting this info from? Wesley shows up. And is again comically out of the loop. It turns out he has the amulet on him, and Angel takes it to put it somewhere safe. We then reinforce that we're watching a Buffy Blade crossover when Balthazar turns out to be that exact thing from Blade. 
Only now he has gained telekinetic powers. Which he only uses when the script sets to. <laughs> Buffy and Faith spy on him, and Buffy convinces Faith that they can't take out all the enemies without weapons, so they break into a sports supply store. Faith convinces Buffy that they should use their Slayer strength to take whatever they want. And when the cops show up... It reminded me of Batman Returns. Oh, yeah. Don't know whether to open fire or fall in love. <laughs> <laughs> they take them in the squad car. Where Faith convinces Buffy they should just bust out, so they cause it to crash. And they practically kill both of the cops inside. And then they leave, apparently forgetting about the big demon cult and the big demon. The next day, I guess, Buffy goes home, where Joyce will not stop talking about waffles. <laughs> is that it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she tries to talk to buffy about slaying but buffy doesn't seem to want to talk about it mayor elbrin participates in a publicity event with some boy scouts and after they leave he opens up a cabinet and is attacked by one of the cult members who says it's there to kill him for balthazar but mr trick knocks him out and mayor elbrin tells him to lock it up it lock it up yeah I i've noticed that i usually refer to vampires as it without thinking about it yeah okay. i don't know if that makes me like sexist or anti-sexist or i don't know <laughs> vampirist and he points out the lack of security necessary for the vampire to get in there but they don't actually explain how it got in there i thought maybe his aide was secretly plotting against him or something balthazar's pissed and says his cult needs to kill anything in their way to get the amulet back which would have been a good plan from the beginning buffy hangs out with willow who gives her something for a protection spell because we've all seen how well that works. <laughs> Buffy tells Willow not to come with her to fight Balthazar and the cult. Because it's too dangerous. Which makes her feel bad. Wesley criticizes Giles and says he is no longer fit to be a watcher when vampires show up. Buffy and Faith are fighting their way to the warehouse with the cult. And while they're killing vampires, Faith accidentally grabs the mayor's aide, who they've never seen before, and stakes him. What was he doing there anyway? Yeah, I thought that was going to be explained later. But it wasn't. Buffy tries to provide what first aid she can, but this is Buffy we're talking about, so he dies. They run away guiltily and separate. An angel shows up and tells Buffy that the cult has Giles. And Faith goes back to check out the body that she killed. Wesley and Giles meet Balthazar, where Wesley starts simpering and trying to make a deal. Then Angel and Buffy show up and start fighting everyone. Giles gets some good hits in, too. Balthazar uses his telekinesis on Angel and tries to crush his head. Because that's the best way to kill a vampire. But Buffy defeats him by dropping a light into his pool. It turns out he's still alive, and he tells Buffy she will wish he had killed them. When he rises, you wish I killed you all. We cut to Mayor Elbrin performing some sort of ritual. And he has Mr. Trick release the vampire that tried to kill him. And the vampire cuts his head in half, but he CGI's himself back together. What an excellent effect. Which, again, made me think we were watching a Blade crossover. <laughs> Mr. Trick kills the vampire, and the mayor crosses an event off his to-do list, saying he will be invincible for the 100 days leading up to his ascension. We close with Faith being visited by Buffy, who asks her to not shut her out. She tries to talk to Faith about what happened, but Faith talks about having already disposed of the evidence, and tries to make it sound like she doesn't care that she killed someone. Bad girls. Overall? Buffy's bad girl behavior was kind of out of nowhere, and it was a little too much. Initially, I thought it was going to be from some influence that wasn't just Faith. If someone talked to me six or seven times about changing my entire behavior for no reason, I'd probably say, all right, I get it, you're starting to be annoying now. But Buffy completely changes immediately. Felt very contrived. I liked the introduction of Wesley, and he is knowledgeable, and the trend of rejecting anyone new is getting kind of old. At the beginning, at least, Wesley seemed willing to work with Giles. It wasn't like Post, who immediately shut him down all the time. Wesley only became kind of a dick after everyone treated him like one. And I wonder if he will show up again or follow the other trend of new characters being gone after one episode. I'm most interested in where the mayor's story is going. It seems like we're building up to something big, and hopefully that pays off, because he is an interesting character. If Faith is so reckless now, then she probably has been in the past, and has she never been picked up by the police before or used any of the gang as alibis when she's caught? Are the rest of them really completely unaware of everything she's doing? And even though she got rid of the body, both she and Buffy are now known visually by law enforcement. I wonder if that's ever going to come up again. I'm surprised they made it through the rest of this episode without being picked up again. 
Yeah, considering they left the police in a crashed car, semi-conscious, you would think they would definitely be going after them. Right. Plus, aren't the police working with the mayor and everything? Or at least some of them. And it's wild to me that Faith is acting like she hasn't killed someone before, because she's probably killed someone before. Buffy has killed regular people before, but justified it or something because they were evil. If she finds out that the mayor is evil and that dude was his assistant, will she suddenly be okay with it? And lastly, Cordelia coming by and shooting barbs is really getting old. We get it. I'm ready for her next stage of character development, whatever it is. It can't be much worse than this. The stuff with the mayor is what's keeping me going right now, and potentially Wesley if he sticks around, but I didn't think this was a great episode. I gave it a C plus. I gave it a B minus. It's about time Buffy got a new watcher, but no one brought up the fact that Faith has gone longer without one. I thought maybe Wesley was supposed to be the watcher for both of them, but that would make even less sense than one watcher for each. I did like how oversure of himself he was, and how he wasn't actually prepared for anything. It reminded me of Lieutenant Gorman from Aliens, but it didn't really make sense that he would be the one they would choose to send. I thought the humor in the episode worked well for the most part, and I liked the development with Faith killing a seeming innocent. And it was good to finally get some advancement of the mayor storyline. It feels like that hasn't gone anywhere in a while. But like you said, Buffy's behavior didn't make a lot of sense. Nothing happened to make her all of a sudden start going along with Faith on everything. And we've seen in the past that they don't seem to really relate to each other that much. I am interested to see where things go from here, though, which is not something that I can usually say.